In this tutorial we're going to look at lists in Grasshopper 3D. Now lists are um, how Grasshopper organizes data so every time you create data or geometry it all gets stored in a list. We've already looked at lists a little bit with the panel so panels are a really good way to see what is in a list. So you can always plug a panel into the output of a definition to see what is coming out of that output and what will come out of that output is a list of either data or geometry. So let's go ahead and create our own list and I'm just going to um, add some numbers here and um, make sure you right click multi-line data. So this is our list of, of data which is just a series of numbers and every list always starts with the index number or the item number which is this first number here and that's its place within this list so it always starts at zero so if you ever want to um, call an item out of a list then you refer to the list item number that's located in this left column here. The data is then on the right here and then up here in the upper right corner that's the path. So that's how many branches on this particular data tree we're looking at. So it's just one branch because it's the first set of data we're using in this definition. So the, the great thing about Grasshopper 3D is that you can actually manipulate that data and do different operations on these lists depending on what you're trying to do. So for example, if we want to reverse a list, and you can find all of this under sets in the list um, group here, you can reverse a list, and let's just copy and paste this panel, and you can see it just takes all the information in that list and reverses it. So now item number eight is item number zero. The next thing we can do, I'll just copy paste this list, is um, find the list length. So list length, again, all of these are going to be located under sets and list. You can find the list length, and you can already guess what that's going to be. It's going to be 10, there are, or 9. There are 9 items in this list, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, and that's because it starts at 0. So even though the last list item is 8, there are 9 items in that list. Okay, the next one we can do is the subset. So subset takes a list of information and it takes a domain so it extracts a subset of that data from that list. So we can create a domain using the domain component. We can construct a domain and with these domains by the way these are located under math domain there's quite a few ways to create domains so sometimes you'll see the same component twice you have construct domain here you can see this is a numeric domain and down here we have construct domain that's a two-dimensional domain so you'll use this one for creating like U's and V's on a surface and this one just for creating numbers a domain between two numbers so now we can do a number slider let's do whole numbers from 0 to 8 because we only have um, from 0 to 8 in the list items and then we can plug this one into A and this one into B and now we can extract a subset of these so we could start here with um, number 3 index 3 and that will bring out the 4 and then we can go all the way to 7 or whatever subset you want and then we can plug that into the domain and then you'll see um, the list coming out of there should be yeah from 3 to 7 so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 the next one we can do is list item. So list item you'll use all the time. List item basically takes out one or more items, very specific items from a list. So you can plug your list into the list item and then I stands for item. So you can actually do a slider like 0 to 8 and then um, we'll do a panel and pull out um, you know list item 0 or if we want list item 5 we can toggle this to 5 and that will pull out the 6 so you can do um, pull out very specific geometry so if you have a bunch of curves you can extract one curve but you can also do multiple so we can take this panel and um, or just do a new panel and we can type in more than one index so I could do 3, 4, and 7 multi-line data and I can plug all of those indices in here and you'll get all of those extracted. So list items are a really useful one. Another really good one is dispatch. So dispatch will take a list and it will dispatch it based on a pattern. So you can create that pattern using and it'll, it'll dispatch it into two different groups um, and you can create that pattern using what are called boolean values. So booleans um, not geometric booleans but numerical bo booleans. So here you can um, say true and false. 
So this is more like the Boolean toggle, which we talked about earlier. So anything that's true will go into list A, anything that's false will go into list B, and this will repeat this pattern. So it'll take this one is true, this one is false, this one is true, this one is false, and it'll just keep going down that list. So you can have as many trues or false in any kind of pattern you want in here. You could do true, true, false, and it will take all the trues and put them in here and all the falses in here. The next one we can do is the weave. So the way weave works is it takes two lists. So let's just make a new list here and I'll just change some of these numbers. Let's do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Again, multi-line data. So we're going to take these two and we're actually going to weave these lists together. So it's almost the opposite of dispatch. And here again, you can do a panel. And one thing I'd like to show here, I could do true or false, but you can also do zero or one. So that stands for true and false as well. And um, so either one works. And then we will make that multi-line data. That will be the pattern. And it will output one list that's weaved together based on that pattern. So as you can expect, it takes the zero of this list first and then the one from this list. So it'll go one, 10, two, 20, and it adds all of those into one single list. The next one is the split list. So split list will take a list. Let's just take this one here and um, it'll split it at a particular index item. So we can take this one and it'll put um, at anything below the item in this first list and anything um, on the other side of the item that you choose in the second list. Okay, so if we do a slider 0 to 8 and then plug that into I, you'll see that um, anything below list item 2, um, so 2 and 1 will go in the first list and then list item 2 and higher will go into the second list. Um, this is where you can start to combine um, some of these different list length and um, list operations. So for example, we can take the list length, you know, figure out what the list is. It's going to be nine, right? Nine items. And then we could do like a mathematic operation and take, um, we, we can take half the list. So we can use multiplication and we can do a panel. And let's say we multiply it by 0.5, which would split the list into two. And then we can use that as our list item. So that way, you're always kind of separating this in two. So if I increase items, let's say I add a 10 and an 11, it'll always know the list length and it'll keep um, parametrically dividing that list in half based on, based on these relationships. So that's a really good way to start using these operations parametrically within the program. Okay, the next one is partition list. So we'll go ahead and let's delete all these. Um, let's do partition list. So partition list will take a list of items and then uh, sort of sift or partition um, this list into a bunch of sublists or a bunch of different lists. So we can see what's happening here. Um, let's just do a panel and we'll break this up into, I think by default it breaks it up into three, two, and three, but you can choose uh, the size of the list that you want to break this up into. So if I want to break it all up into lists of two, I can plug in that pattern and you'll see that it takes the first two, puts it in a list, the second group, and then puts that in a list and so on. So this can be any number, like I could do three, you know, break everything up into three groups. You can actually do a pattern here so it doesn't have to be just one number. So that can be pretty useful if you want to break one list into multiple lists or a more, you know, this becomes a, a more complex data tree where you have lists of lists happening. The next one is sort and sort is a really great component not only for numbers like we're doing here but also for geometry like you can sort um, geometry and we'll get once we get into attractors we'll start looking at sort in a little more detail but sort allows you to sort a list into um, another list so you can see you can sort it based on list length or sort it based on distance to something so this a is the parameter that you use to sort that list into um, the kind of list structure that you're looking for so in this case it's already sorted so what we can do is let's do a new panel and let's do one that everything is out of sort. So we'll just kind of add some numbers in here and you know even negative numbers work and um, this will then sort those from smallest to largest. So if I plug this in here you can see it resorts them the smallest number is negative five all the way to largest. So again that's really good you can use like distance to a point to sort 
um, geometry or different kind of things so that's a really useful component for a lot of different reasons and then the last one I want to show you is the pick and choose so pick and choose which looks like this this is located under sets list again um, takes a bunch of lists and you can actually pick from them and then sort them into one list so let's just do a few lists here I'll make this one 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This one 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And then, um, so what we can do is sort these two lists. So let's take this list and this list, and we'll plug one into 0 and the other one into 1. And then the next thing we need is a pattern. So I'll just delete that one. Let's do a new list here, new panel. And so again, this could be trues or falses or zeros and ones. And so we can just type in you know, the pattern that we want to use. And basically what it will do is, and it doesn't have to be a repeating pattern, it'll say if it's a one, it'll take from um, this list. If it's a zero, it'll take from that list and then it will combine all of those into one final list. So this will be the list that combines. So this is the pattern. And then, oh, I got a multi-line data that. So you turn to multi-line data, uses that pattern, and then it weaves these things basically together and then ignores the rest. So because there's an odd number between these two lists, the last item is a null, which is fine.